What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So as you saw from the title, we're gonna head to the garage, we're gonna deep dive exactly how much my G80 M3 cost me and some of the options I got. So let's go into the garage and check it out. All right, so I have my 2022 G80 M3 and what we have here is the window sticker. And basically, I laminated the window sticker. I'm that type of guy. I have two copies of them both laminated at FedEx. And if you guys are really OCD like that, head over to FedEx, I think it's like three or four bucks to get it laminated. But we're gonna deep dive into exactly what options I have and why I chose them. End of the day, I'm gonna give you guys a breakdown on price. All right, like I said, this is my 2022 G80 M3 in BMW individual paint color, Emola Red. So the first thing right off the bat, we're gonna talk about the paint color. The paint color is a very historic BMW color. Uh, the first time it came out was back with the E46 M3. And ever since I saw that color, I always fell in love with it. So when picking out the color, I knew I had to pick this one. And just to give you an idea, this is a $3,750 option back when I ordered the car. And I'm gonna tell you everything. When you order a M3 or M4, now it's gonna be totally different than what I'm pricing out about a year ago. Because inflation, you're talking about the cost of raw material, the cost of labor, everything has gone up in the past year. So when you're ordering an individual color, you guys have to know that it's gonna take time. It's gonna take a little bit longer than your regular production. And with this special paint color, um, the, the dollar amount was about $3,750 that I paid to get this specific color. And right off the bat, we're gonna look at the next option I opted for. Me personally, my personal opinion, I needed a six speed manual, so check it out. So what you're looking at is a dying breed, right? Six-speed manual transmission, and in my personal opinion, I think it's more engaging to drive, and I don't really need something that's the fastest car. I look more into having the proper engagement running through the gears and things like that. Sure, when you look at it, the all-wheel drive competition, you're pushing a lot more power, you're pushing about another 50 to 60 extra horsepower, my personal opinion, I didn't need that. I cared more about the drivability and also the engagement of the car, so which is why I opted for the six-speed manual. So with the base car, we're gonna talk about the price. The base car itself without any options, you're looking at $70,100 for just the base price back in 2021 of December. So that's when I ordered my car. All right, so we're gonna continue with the exterior. We're jumping to the exterior later, but as you can see, we have the 826 M wheels, and as you can see on the pattern, these are the bicolor. The reason why I went with the bicolor is that I honestly think the bicolor has a little bit more of a character when it comes to the wheels. The other options are entirely black wheels, which I wasn't a really big fan of. And if you like black wheels, that's for you. But for me, I just feel like the black wheels gets hidden in this whole scheme of the design. But going back into the wheels, behind that we have red calipers. So check it out. We have red calipers. Does it entirely match the Imola red? No, it does not, but it definitely goes to the whole theme. This one's more of a lighter color red compared to the Imola red. The Imola red's more of a deeper, um, kind of like a blood red, so to say. But as you can see, I also lost the tire lottery. These are the Pirelli tires that are known on the forums. If you get these tires, you lose the tire lottery. Um, obviously the Michelins would have been a little bit more of my ideal based on the performance in the wet, also the dry, the Michelin absolutely performs a lot better. From everybody what's been saying, and me personally having these tires since uh, the end of June, you can definitely feel the difference because I've had the Michelin PS4s on my F80M3 and those grip a lot more, especially in the rain and also on the dry. So go along with the exterior of the car. One thing that's very notable, so if you guys are seeing a G80, G, G82 M4 on the road, if you see a chrome badge like right over here, this means this is gonna be a manual car. And check it out towards the back. Well, look at that chrome. I originally thought I was gonna change this out for like a black emblem, but as the manual cars become a dying breed, and I, the reason why I say a dying breed because I think I mentioned it before, BMW is probably gonna be getting rid of the manual transmission. I think we saw some hints about it when they announced the M2, um, but I think this is a badge of honor. So I'm gonna rock it. 
comes with either an eight-speed M Steptronic automatic transmission or, and making the BMW M2 the last of its kind expected in this segment, a manual transmission. So when you're building your car, one of the options that you could do that's a zero dollar option is the black shadow line exterior trim. And that's something I chose because if you look at the car, it looks a lot more aggressive. One of the cons about having the black shadow line trim is that if you don't get a PPF, we all know high gloss gives you a lot of swirl marks. <laughs> if you're just like me and it bothers the hell out of you seeing these swirl marks, then you're definitely gonna wanna get that PPF because over time, regardless if you do the proper uh, maintenance washes, the two bucket method, the three bucket method, you're gonna see those swirl marks. The only way to kind of prevent that from happening is get a PPF. And if you guys haven't watched that video out, um, I'll link it in the description. It's a whole PPF series where we got the car prepped and all that. So I'm interrupting this portion of the video to thank our sponsors, and that's coming from Simply Carbon Fiber. As you can see, Simply Carbon Fiber sent me a lot of different accessories, but today we're gonna to talk about their wallets. You have the Alcantara, made with real carbon fiber wallet. This is more of those wallets where you wanna use for a lot of options, where you can hold a lot of cards and your money, but I'm not gonna lie. One of the most uh, of their accessories I've been using daily is actually gonna be their carbon fiber money clip. They have two different versions. You have the forged carbon, as you can see right over here. And I also have the traditional two by two weave carbon fiber money clip. And this is something that's gonna hold all your cards along with your money on the back. I'm not gonna lie, I use this a lot because I have to keep my pockets slim. On days where I need to hold a bit more, I use their Alcantara wallet. So if you wanna pick up anything from their website, you can use this discount code right over here. That's gonna save you some money. Now let's jump back into the video and, and tell you guys all the other options I picked for this car. So I'm gonna reference this, the F80 M3. You know how when you guys went from 2015 over to 2018, when you look at the headlights, one of the most things that kind of stand out to me is the Icon headlights. And that only came on the 18 uh, F80 M3s, and I believe also the M4s. And they actually went into the 19s when they continued the M4 throughout that year. And when you look at these headlights, these are the Icon adaptive LED laser lights. And when you look at these, light, these lights, it looks incredible. I'm gonna let it start up real quick. These lights itself, makes it full, makes it more aggressive. And when you're taking photos and videos, this just absolutely looks insane. The ones that are not the Icon Adaptive LED headlights, you just have a little, I guess, eyelid on the bottom here. And for me, that incompletes the look. Having these lights here definitely amplifies the aggressiveness of this car. So if you guys are building this, definitely check this out. This is a thousand dollar option that I absolutely think it's worth it. And if you ever get to the point where you're about to sell your car, I think a lot of people are gonna be looking for this as an option, especially a good buddy of mine, uh, Walter. He just picked up a gorgeous Daytona Violet uh, G80 M3. And one of the main things he was looking for was the adaptive LED headlights. And he has them, I think it's one of the best things that you could probably do on your option, and it's not gonna break the bank. It's a thousand dollar option. So when I chose the adaptive LED headlights, one thing that I needed to do that I felt like it was necessary was the black housing. This housing right here is the M shadow line lights. So basically what it does, it blocks out the housing. And when you look at it, it looks more aggressive. A lot of times you don't notice this on a feature for other people's cars, other people's builds. But when you really think about it, that looks a lot better. So definitely consider that. This is a $300 option. And end of the day, if it's worth it, it has to go with you and asking yourself, is it worth it? I think it's worth it for the $300. So the next option I'm gonna talk about that I selected for myself, and I didn't have it on my FEM3, was actually the executive package. Check this out. This right here is the module for the executive package, or one of the options, which actually displays your heads-up display. So the heads-up display was something that I never had on my FEM3, and when you see other people driving with the executive package, kind of makes you feel like, damn, I should have got that. But again, the F80 M3 was actually a used car, so I didn't really have that option. Um, what's so good about the, having the executive package is that you have the 360 camera. So if you're parked and you're worried about your surroundings sometimes, you could actually go into the app, uh, look at a 360 view of your car, making sure it's safe, making sure it wasn't molested or anything like that. And also one of the best thing that I've seen 
that I've used on the executive package is that having the front cameras are a lifesaver. So when you're pulling up to an intersection or pulling out of a parking spot when you're back then, I hit the front cameras just to make sure that it's clear instead of worrying about inching out slowly. So that option there alone increases the safety, also increases the ability to not get into those minor fender benders. Um, not that I have any issues, but it gives me the more confidence. And I honestly think it's one of the best things you could do. It gives you a heated steering wheel, right? And a lot of people really could care about that. It's something that keeps you nice and warm during the winter times. Me personally, we live in South Florida here. I don't really need it too often. This is probably maybe one of those few days we're actually due. So when you opt for the executive package, one of the things that when you get it, right, I think what people kind of convince this is not the M3 anymore, is that it actually has a powered tailgate. And my personal opinion, I actually like this a lot. It's literally one touch of a button and it opens, right? You're able to put your groceries down or if you're bringing car parts that you don't want to tell your significant other, you can put it in here and obviously I'm right, automatically either close it or lock it. And I just hit the lock button, which automatically locks the car. I think that's a really cool option. I know a lot of the M3s previously in the past never had it, but I think it's a really useful option for me. So when you order an M3, M4, one of the options that you could pick is a non-cost option, right? You could either pick a moonroof, right? Or you could have the carbon fiber roof. I opted to get the carbon fiber roof. This is something that I had on my F80 M3. I think this just adds to this aesthetics and also the heritage of the M3. Obviously in the first generation M3s, they never had it. Uh, this really became prominent on the E9X chassis. And I think it looks really unique. There's not a lot of cars out there that actually has a carbon fiber roof that adds to performance. Obviously this is better for a better center of gravity when you're racing, tracking the car and stuff. Most likely I'm not tracking the car. I may take it on autocross, but we'll see. Um, but this is something that was an option for myself and I'm glad I got it. It looks absolutely amazing and it just adds character. And I think as we get onto future sports cars, we know this is a dying breed where it's gonna be petrol. We're gonna have sports cars becoming electric. I think this is gonna be a very um, interesting uh, option to have. So let's go over to the interior options I selected. And one of the most important option was the carbon fiber seats, which I actually made a video about and check them out. When you look at these carbon fiber seats and you look at that carbon fiber back, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. At the time when I ordered this um, build, it was a $3,800 option. I believe that has increased to $4,500 now. You really have to ask yourself if this is an option for you. When I ordered the car, this is something that I definitely wanted. And if you look at the front of the car or the driver's portion of the seat, it has aggressive styling, the high bolsters, you have the nice three-point harness where you can actually utilize this as a three-point harness if you were to race the car, track the car, or do you just want to add some more spice to your interior for car shows. All right, so to continue with the rest of the interior, um, one of the options I selected for myself was actually the carbon fiber interior trim. That was a $900 option. With the carbon fiber interior trim, what you have is carbon fiber in this portion of the center console, along with across the dash here for your passengers to look at and also to scratch up if they want. And what I think is a nice touch is that when you look at this steering wheel here, right? This steering wheel has a carbon fiber trim all around the sides and that looks absolutely more aggressive as more of a sports car. And you can see here, it kind of has, uh, it integrates into the steering wheel where it gives it a nice um, OEM touch, but not going over too board. So the M driver's package, as you can see here, it gives you a 10 stage traction control. This is something that I may use in obviously a, a parking lot or something like that where it's safe, but what you can do is actually drift. And this actually analyzes your drifts and kind of rates you. So for all you guys like to hoon around, this may hurt your ego or it actually may uh, give you some ideas of how much more practice you need to drift. Um, I think this was a decent option to add. It was only a $900 option. And I think it was something that I wanted to test out, obviously with these different stages of traction, which was, I thought was pretty cool at the time. Um, have I used it? No, I haven't. So do I think it's worth it? Um, 
If you're really tight on your budget, then probably leave this out. But if your budget's a little bit open, then maybe you could add this on. One of the things that people have asked me is, hey, Kent, why didn't you get the full leather package? So if you look at my dashboard here, the reason why I didn't want to go with the full leather dash is because after time, and I've seen this on multiple other F80 M3s, M4s, right? Um, I had buddies that had a dash here and it started lifting. The hot sun here in Florida, regardless if it's outside or inside the garage, whatever happens to these high temperatures, it allows the leather to lift up from the dash. And if I plan on keeping this car for a little bit, and I really think I, I want to, because this is the last you know, non-hybrid M3, so I think this is really special. Especially, I picked it up myself, I built it myself, I have a story behind it, so I definitely want to keep this car. But do I really want the dash out of warranty to start lifting? I really don't. And um, you know, one of my uh, good buddies, Kevin Tipton, he had an M4, and I'm not sure if you know this, Kevin, but when I was sitting in your back seat, uh, some of your panels on the side of your, uh, your M4 were lifting, you know, because you had the full leather package. And I've rather heard of other horror stories where people actually had that problem. I didn't want to deal with that long term. And that's something that you need to look into if that's worth it for you. So is it worth it? My, my personal opinion for that dollar amount that you're paying for the full leather, it wasn't worth it for me as long as you're keeping the car long term. If you plan on keeping the car for a few years or it's in a temperature controlled environment, then maybe add the full leather. It definitely adds a nice um, interior touch to it, especially with the full leather on the dashboard here, you kind of have the Fiona red interior kind of cover it out. And one thing I wanted to add too, as you can see from the carbon fiber seats and also me sitting here, we have Fiona red interior. And the reason why I wanted to go with Fiona red interior is because when I was building this car, I wanted a loud spec. And the reason I wanted a loud spec is because I always wanted something a little bit more aggressive than what I had before. And I had an Austin yellow car. So we have, I call it triple red. The red exterior, you get the red interior, which is the Fiona red, and also the red brake calibers. Is that too much red? That's for you guys to decide. I honestly think it's a nice touch. I think it's a really good, unique look. And not everybody's gonna do this, so. All right, as you can see, this emblem, it's a very unique emblem. It's not the ones you've seen on a lot of BMWs. And when you look at this, this is one of the newest emblems they've had. It's a traditional emblem that had back in the day, but they brought it back. And this is gonna commemorate the 50 years of M. And the reason why I have this, people always ask me, hey Ken, how did you get these emblems? These were only available for production after March of 2022 and on. I think it ends, I think, in 2023. So I was actually lucky to have this. And the reason why, I guess things happen for a reason, my order was pushed back a long time, which actually gave me an option of getting these emblems. So when Marcus Cooper actually texted me, he goes, hey, Ken, I think you're gonna get these emblems. I was, like, I was actually pretty excited. Um, these look very unique on this car because that red here kind of goes with the mole red, so it doesn't clash too much. But when you have different colors like uh, green or things like that, it may not look the best. But I definitely like these emblems. I'm gonna leave these on. I know some people are not big fans of them. And with these 50th anniversary emblems, you actually see them on the wheels. You got it on the center caps. And you also have it on the front of the hood. So one of the areas where I wish it had was actually on the steering wheel. You, you know, you figure BMW had it on every single portion of the car where it had the emblem. You'd figure they changed it on the steering wheel. I think that would have been a pretty cool um, option to have, but obviously they did not. And I've had some people ask me, what are those formats? Those formats are actually specifically only for um, when you opt for the Fiona red interior. As you can see, the pipeline red interior trim, it kind of gives it a different look. All right, so one of the options I didn't mention that actually looking at this build sheet now plays into the role of the executive package. I know when people first started ordering the G80 M3s and G82 M4s, a lot of these options were totally different the way you selected it. And in 2022, they made it more a la carte. So I know when I was building this car, I told Marcus Cooper, my sales advisor, that I wanted the 360 camera. 
And the 360 camera used to be part of the executive package, but they took it out, they made it out of a cart. So it is what it's called now is the parking assistant package. So during the time that I was building my car, they renamed that option, the 360 cameras, to the parking assistant package. And what that included too was the drive recorder. And one of the best options and best attributes about having the drive recorder is that it acts like a dash cam. So it records some time before the incident and also some time after the incident. And it allows you to have that peace of mind where you're unable to explain it or you don't have any witnesses for God forbid an accident, you have it on there on the iDrive system. What's so good about it too is that if I have some people driving reckless and stuff, I want to record it, I can hold um, that camera indicator button right over here. And that allows me to basically record, I guess, sometime before and sometime after. Um, and also, again, it acts like a dash camera. Um, obviously, you probably should get an independent dash camera and to record. Um, probably it's a lot better to have just in case. Um, but again, that was an $800 option, and I'm glad I got it. The three cameras, like I mentioned uh, earlier, is a great option to have, and it allows you to have that peace of mind when you're getting in and out of the spots. All right, so the total cost to build my car was $85,445, and that does not include any taxes and fees, dealer fees. That does include the shipping fee that's a universal charge on all builds, and that's $995. But other than that, this is pretty much everything that I talked about. Um, this is an incredible build. Is it a fully loaded car? No, it's not. And we're gonna get into a video where I kind of regret things I didn't get and kind of regret things I spent money on. And we'll get into that video later on. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this video up. I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. I also wanted to make this video for quite a little bit. It's been a little busy. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of what options that you may want on your build. And this is another way of looking at somebody else's thought process of building their M3. Um, for the ones that are not building a brand new M3, you know, the used car market has a lot more M3s, M4s coming onto the market. And my advice, take your time, find the one that you want because you're spending your hard on money to get a nice car. So you wanna wait for the right one. Um, but I wanna thank you guys again. If you guys have any questions about some of the options I got, let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys on, on the next video.